everyone, it's Dr. Joseph McHale here. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of the International Myeloma Foundation and a professor at the Translational Genomics Research Institute in Phoenix, Arizona. I am going to give you in one short video the overview of all the key research in myeloma. Well, not all, but the top line research in myeloma from ASCO, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, and EHA, the European Hematology Association. And as a bonus, I'll include some of the things that happened at the discussion of the IMWG or the International Myeloma Working Group. All three of these meetings took place in June 2025. This was a massive month for multiple myeloma. There were hundreds of abstracts that were submitted and accepted for these meetings. So it's impossible to cover it all, but I'm gonna put it very quickly in five categories and try to give you the highlights from each of those five categories. Number one is smoldering multiple myeloma. As we know, myeloma has a spectrum from MGUS to smoldering to active myeloma. We've had tremendous work recently in smoldering myeloma, and this came out of the previously presented Aquila trial showing that Darzalex or daratumumab versus just typical active monitoring can actually keep people away from myeloma for longer and potentially affect overall survival. Well, the updates to this that we saw at these meetings was that we still are sorting out the best way to detect high-risk smoldering myeloma, looking at those patients that are unfortunately very close to becoming active myeloma and looking at ways of treating them better, whether it is like a single agent with Darzalex or Daratumumab, or is it better to give them more intense therapy? That is still under investigation. This was a hot topic at the International Myeloma Working Group as we better define that group and, and study that group of patients so that we can know what's best for them. Topic number two was frontline therapy. This was incredible. Lots going on here. I'm going to highlight three trials. Number one, the MIDAS trial, arguably the most interesting frontline study that we saw, where the French uh, uh, group studied what happens if you give someone ESA KRD, ESA Tuximab, Kyprolis, or Carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone as six cycles of induction. And then if they get to MRD negativity, you give them a treatment. If they don't get to MRD negative to negativity and remain MRD positive, you give them a different, more intense treatment. And what was fascinating is in the MRD negative patients, they randomized them to either just getting more ESA KRD or getting ESA KRD with a transplant. And there was no real big difference between those groups. Similarly, in the MRD positive group, they gave them um, either ESA KRD in a single transplant or a double transplant. And initially, again, there's no difference between those groups. Now, we need longer-term follow-up, but this may indicate to us that patients who get to MRD negativity may not require a transplant. Again, I don't want to call it too early. We need longer-term follow-up, but it's fascinating to see studies that are designed to follow MRD negativity. On the subject of MRD negativity, trial number two was the Perseus trial, where we had updates to this study, where we gave the quadruplet of daratumumab, VRD, Velcade, Revlimid, and dexamethasone with a transplant, some consolidation, and then maintenance. And they were following up patients in maintenance. So in the intervention arm, patients got daratumumab and Revlimid for up to two years, and then just stayed on Revlimid versus Revlimid alone. And that group continues to do particularly well. It's fascinating. Over half of those patients remained in MRD negativity for two years. We've really, really never seen this before in myeloma. So it is potentially moving us to giving more dual maintenance, not just lenalidomide alone, but potentially adding daratumumab to it. And lastly, in frontline therapy, the third study that I'm going to mention was the GMMG concept study, which was a study looking at high-risk myeloma. I'll end my talk today with high-risk myeloma. You remember, these are unfortunately patients with myeloma whose disease is more aggressive and comes back more quickly. And they gave a very intense regimen of giving esotuximab KRD with a transplant, and then continuing that. Eventually, thankfully, they dropped the DEX, but continued on the ESA KR. And what was fascinating here was two things. One, at six years, over two thirds of these patients were still alive, which is historically not what we see with high risk disease. So it tells us we need to be more intense with patients. And secondly, those patients that achieved MRD negativity did so much better than those who did not. And so seeking MRD negativity, especially in high risk patients, is particularly important. All right, let's move to topic number three, which is early relapse. Lots going on in this field. 
I'm going to start with number one, um, the new potential delivery of isatuximab or sarclisa with what was called an on-body injector or OBI. This is quite fascinating because it wasn't the usual uh, uh, given subcutaneously, but actually a little device that sits on the body and with a tiny 30 gauge needle uh, it pushes in the isatuximab over about 12 to 13 minutes. Not yet approved, but we do believe it will come. It will make it easier to give ESA and possibly uh, give it at home. And secondly, in the early relapse area, which I think is really important, is we saw some updates to the DREAM trials regarding belantamab mafodotin, a drug that we hope to be able to have in the future in multiple myeloma, already being approved in some other countries uh, here in the U.S. We hope to have it because this is a drug that has a different mechanism um, than we do with CAR T-cell therapy and bispecific antibodies. And the results were very impressive, whether combined with bortezomib or with omalidomide, we saw deep and durable responses with these patients. All right, let's move to topic number four, arguably the most discussed topic, that was late relapse. Maybe the most discussed abstract of all of ASCO and EHA was the follow-up of the CARTITUDE-1 trial. These are patients who received CAR T-cell therapy in the form of Siltacel or Carvicti. They had on average six prior lines of therapy, and now we had the long-term follow-up. What was amazing was one third of those patients, five years after that single infusion, are still disease-free. We've never seen this in myeloma. It's actually gotten us to start thinking about how do we even define cure in myeloma? Not that those patients are necessarily cured, but remarkable that that fraction of patients remain disease-free thereafter. So obviously we need more follow-up and, and better understanding, but this really gives us hope for what we can do for CAR T-cell therapy. The second uh, st study that I'll mention, or actually two together, two different studies, but similar concept were the tri-specific. So in a bi-specific antibody, we have two arms, one hooks onto the myeloma cell, the other onto a T-cell to engage it. Here, these drugs have a third arm. So two arms hook onto the myeloma cell and a third arm to the T-cell. And the new bi-specific uh, uh, that combined at reaching onto both BCMA and GPRC5D on the myeloma cell was remarkable. We saw great response rates and importantly, less of the side effects than we see when we give the two drugs together. And it could be, of course, because we're giving the drug less frequently too, is given once monthly. So a little early yet, not ready for prime time, but I think this speaks to the future. There was also another tri-specific that targeted BCMA and CD38. And I think this speaks of what's coming to the future that will be able to give these drugs even more effectively with less side effects uh, than giving them in combination. But on the subject of combination, I do want to mention that there was a fascinating combination. It was presented a late-breaking abstract at EHA by one of our scientific advisory board members, Dr. Shaji Kumar, the redirect one trial that looked at combining teclistimab and telquetimab, two different bispecifics that target BCMA and GPRC5D, in historically very challenging patients to treat, which are patients with extramedullary disease. And together, the response rate was 80%, much higher than we've seen before. And again, speaks to the importance of that more intense therapy in high-risk patients. And then lastly, in late relapse, we saw um, updates to the most recent CAR T-cell therapy that's being evaluated, a NITO cell, which is really remarkable, over 90% response rates. And we really haven't seen any of those late neurological effects that we sometimes see with uh, with Carvicti. And so that's very encouraging, still not approved yet, still early, but very encouraging. Lastly, my final and fifth category, we've looked together at smoldering myeloma. We've looked at frontline therapy, at early relapse, at late relapse. Let's take number five, which is high-risk multiple myeloma. This has always been a challenge. There's always been around 20 to 25% of myeloma patients will have a more regressive form of the disease. And it's been hard to truly measure it, but the International Myeloma Working Group and the International Myeloma Society came together and we now have a new definition of high-risk myeloma. I won't go through it in detail with you. You'll have to look it up, but we have five different categories or five different features. And if someone has any one of those five, they would be considered high-risk. This is important because it'll help us do future clinical trials and it'll help us know in which patients we potentially need to be more intense in our therapy as we've seen from some of the other studies that I've mentioned. So, wow, what a whirlwind tour, what a, a month in uh, the world of multiple myeloma, but right across the spectrum of myeloma, incredible research going on. The IMF is at the center of it and it's a privilege 
to be a part of the myeloma community so we can have our patients live better and live longer. Thank you so much for listening.